Okay, in, in this video we are going to look through chemical methods that uh, we use to control microbes. And there are a lot of products we're going to go through, or active ingredients. And for these, there's different information on each slide, but what you're looking for is when would they be used, and why wouldn't they be used. So. Are they useful in some circumstances but not others? Or are they useful against some organisms and not others? Always pay attention to which ones can sterilize something. <clears throat> That's by far the most important distinction we make. Also, we look at toxicity. Can they be used on skin? Can they be used on a mucous membrane? Um, that kind of thing. And in some cases, I don't have much information to give you, and so you don't have to fill in the blanks. If that information is not on the slides, you don't need to know it. So we'll keep that in mind. So as we get into chemical methods, um, this is where the three C's become important. And you really could apply these to, uh, to the physical methods. So the three C's are chemical, concentration, and contact time. So chemical um, would be what active ingredient are you using? Did you choose the right one? Is it uh, powerful or weak? Concentration, how much of the active ingredient is present um, per volume, generally speaking? So are you using a 10% solution of bleach or a 1% solution of bleach? Um, and then, and, and then the, the, the contact time, it's silly, it should be time, but to make it three C's, they say contact time. How long are you exposing the surface you're cleaning? How long are you exposing that to the disinfecting product? So if you put bleach on a surface, do you wipe it up right away or do you leave it there for a minute? All of these variables, chemical concentration and contact time, affect um, the overall uh, reduction in microbial population. So they all affect how extensively um, microbes are killed. So the, the chemical might not be capable of sterilization, or it might. If the concentration is wrong, it doesn't matter what chemical you use. Um, and if the contact time is too short, then you cannot do enough decimal reductions. So you looked at decimal reduction times, well, that's where the contact time comes in. Um, and the one of the most important things you can get from this is that decimal reduction times are measurable. They're not instantaneous. So contact time has to be significant. In many cases, you're supposed to leave a product on a surface for a few minutes um, to be sure that it has disinfected the surface. And so um, we always have to think about these three C's. And chances are you'll be asked about them on the, um, what's the word, exam. So the first chemical thing we look at are the halogens, and it's just a class of molecules. A halogen is an atom um, in a certain column of the periodic table, like chlorine and iodine and bromine and fluorine, they have specific chemical properties. They're very electronegative, and that just affects how they react with other chemicals. And that makes um, many of them very useful in killing stuff. So a lot of these can sterilize, but they but that takes so long we don't use them as sterilants. So iodine is... Uh, it doesn't go through skin very well, so it's an antiseptic. So you see its mode of action here. It's damaging proteins. Um, bleach is a very commonly used disinfectant, um, and it is capable of sterilization, but it has to be in contact for several minutes to do sterilization. The active ingredient in bleach is hypochlorite, which can be, um, so that's a, an ion that has to have um, a positive ion along with it. So it's sodium hypochlorite or hypochlorous acid. Um, typically this is sold in roughly a 6% solution in water, but we call that full strength. 
And so you then dilute that 10 to 1. And that brings you down to 0.5 or 0.6% total hypochlorite. So if you hear 10% bleach, that's actually something like half a percent total hypochlorite. And that's a very powerful, still very powerful um, disinfectant. The tricky thing with bleach is that light inactivates it. So if you leave it exposed to light, it will just become sodium chloride. Um, and it, because of that, it's kept in heavy, dense plastic bottles. And once you dilute it, you have to use it right away. Um, another halogen is chlorine gas, and that's one of the most, um, it's very widely used, I'd say. But it's a gas, and we're going to look at gases separately. Alcohols are the next thing we look at, and there are a lot of alcohols used for different purposes, but the most familiar to a lot of us would be um, in hand sanitizers, and they're, they're used um, as disinfectants on skin. Um, alcohols are also used as sanitizers. Now that is a, disin a, a very confusing thing, but sanitizers um, do like washing, so remember, a sanitizer um, could be used for decontamination, for physically removing microorganisms as opposed to killing them. And so alcohols are used for this purpose a lot, and they're good at that. So um, even if they don't kill the microorganisms, if they successfully remove them, that can be just as good. Hand sanitizer, meanwhile, is attempting to physically kill microorganisms on your hand instead of physically removing them. So the way alcohols work is they um, can disrupt the plasma membrane, they can damage proteins, things like that. And so they're, they're going to be um, useful against cells more so than against endospores or like naked viruses. They wouldn't work against those. Um, they're, they're useful for things like uh, rubbing skin before an injection. An alcohol wipe will physically remove bacteria from skin um, and then evaporate completely, and that's that's really nice. It's That's not a 100% thing. There will be bacteria left, um, and alcohols don't... Um, they, they cannot achieve uh, sterilization. Um, but they are very, very common as decontaminants. Um, and so, again, you'll see in laboratories people will use um, ethanol, typically, or isopropanol to clean lab benches where they've done uh, microbiology research. And even though it won't kill the microorganisms, um, it will remove them from the surface in a lot of cases. But the key thing to remember here is that alcohols are not sterilants. They're better used for decontamination, for physical removal, than they are for um, killing microorganisms. One common alcohol is phenol, and phenol is a little different from ethanol and isopropanol. It's more toxic, and much more irritating, um, so uh, it burns skin. And um, Another name for phenol is carbolic acid. That's what Joseph Lister was using in his surgical antisepsis when he first showed sur surgical antisepsis was um, effective. But spraying phenol on a wound um, would be incredibly unpleasant. It, even if you just get it on skin, it will burn. So it's rarely used these days. Now we have other phenolics, so they're, they're derivatives of phenol, um, such as um, hexachlorophene, and they would be used to clean um, skin. I think that's the main thing they'd be used for. Another class of chemicals are surfactants, and this isn't like, these aren't related to each other as closely as the halogens are, for example, or the alcohols. There are lots of different types of surfactants. But what surfactants all do is they let oil and water mix. They help dissolve hydrophobic materials in water. That's what they do. And so they're useful for mechanical removal or decontamination. Um, for that purpose, they can dissolve fats. They could disrupt membranes in some cases. Most of them would not work for sterilizing because they're not going to have an effect on things like endospores. 
um, but they can be very useful for physically removing microorganisms. That's why we use soap. Um, soaps are good sanitizers and they are great for decontamination. Um, there are also various um, acids used in in um, food processing. They're not used because they're acidic. They are. It's just that they are anions. When you put them in water, um, the proton comes off and what's left behind is a negative charge. It's an anion, and that's why they're classified this way. The more common surfactants that you would see in a clinic are the cations. They're the quaternary ammonias, or quats. These are very powerful um, chemicals that can disrupt cell membranes. And so they are the active ingredient in a lot of different um, products, for example, for antiseptics for skins, or so they can be used in skin and on um, inert surfaces in clinics. Um, aldehydes are also a class of reactive chemicals that are related to alcohols. Some of them are toxic enough that they can be used um, to sterilize medical equipment. I don't know much about um, how these work. Um, another specific chemical is chlorhexidine, and this is going to be common. Um, people will use this to wash their hands before surgery. Um, and that's useful because it's not toxic, but also it will um, stay on them, uh, stay on the skin. And it's very effective for disrupting plasma membranes, so it can kill bacteria. Um, but it doesn't sterilize skin because it doesn't kill endospores. That brings us to the gases. These are the chemical methods that are delivered through gases instead of liquids. Um, and these are very intense and typically incredibly dangerous. So one of them is ethylene oxide. And um, if you know organic chemistry, if you look up the structure of ethylene oxide, you will see that it screams reactive. It's incredibly reactive, and it just looks wrong. If you see its chemical structure, it just looks wrong. Um, and so this would be used for things like sterilizing syringes or sterilizing machines in some cases. Um, but I think like medical gauze bandages and things used to be um, sterilized using ethylene oxide. Yeah, and then uh, chlorine gas is the other major, um, very common gas used uh, in disinfection. Um, typically it's used, it's not used to sterilize. It's used, for example, in drinking water. So they dissolve it in drinking water and um, it can decrease bacterial populations very quickly. And it can, so if you taste a tiny bit of chlorine in the tap water you're drinking, that's a good thing because that means um, microorganisms aren't getting to you through your tap water. Um, but chlorine gas is incredibly dangerous. Um, there are also some heavy metals we use that interact with proteins in ways that damage them. So silver nitrate um, has been used as eye drops and zinc is used in some cases. These are strange because of the way they would uh, interfere with microorganisms is very specific um, to, the, to the, the actual enzymes they're inhibiting. So the last uh, active ingredient I'll show you is hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide is a potent and reactive uh, molecule. And so um, it can be used to clean skin. People would pour it into scratches before they put bandages on. So if you pour hydrogen peroxide over a cut, it will hurt a lot, but it will also disappear pretty quickly. And so you could bandage it without having to remove any residue. And then if you're curious, we have this table of um, concentrations and, and times for various uh, different chemical agents and various different microorganisms that you might use those agents to kill. And note things like these concentrations vary from less than one part per million up through like 70% for, for ethanol. And the times range from seconds to hours to 
If you see um, a time like 150 minutes or 25 hours, that's telling you that this agent really doesn't work or would never be used against this microorganism. Okay, so that's all of the required slides for this, um, this topic. The rest of this video, I'm going to go through curiosity slides that you can skip if you want to. Um, what I'm going to go through systematically is Santa cloth. So this is something that's not used in uh, research settings, but a lot of my students um, have been CNAs or medical technicians, and they have seen these used or they've used these a lot. And I'm fascinated by this line of products because they have different active ingredients and different instructions and they come with contact times and they tell you active ingredients and they tell you what microorganisms they're effective against. And so what I've done is I've gone to the company that makes Santa cloth and I've downloaded the label information. So for each of these products, I can show you what the active ingredient is, what the contact time is and what microorganisms it's supposed to kill. Um, I don't mean to endorse this product because I don't know what its competitors are and I don't know if it's as good as its competitors, but these products have been evaluated um, in some cases by the EPA and in others by the FDA um, and they've been tested independently. So they do what they say on the labels that they do. Um, and so I want to walk you through these products um, and show you the connection between their active ingredients and their um, their effectiveness. So each of these um, has other chemicals that are the quote unquote inactive ingredients, um, like surfactants that help dissolve them, um, water, pH buffers. These aren't that important. I want to get into the active ingredients. So I start with red. I call it red, Santa Cloth Plus. It says it can kill 16 microorganisms in three minutes. So there's your contact time, three minutes. And the active ingredients are a mix of quaternary ammonias. It can kill Staphylococcus aureus, which is somewhat hard to kill. Notice it doesn't say anything about endospores. It doesn't say anything about um, mycobacterium tuberculosis. It doesn't say anything about norovirus or other naked viruses. Um, so this would not be used in a place where you'd expect a lot of really nasty pathogens. Um, but a dentist office, for example, would be a good place to use this. Purple, look how intense that is. 30 microorganisms in two minutes, a faster contact time. They have the same quaternary ammonias that the red product did, but if you go back and look, 0.125% each. 0.25% each, so twice as much of the quaternary ammonias, and isopropyl alcohol, so a mix of three um, active ingredients. And it can kill the mycobacterium, Staphylococcus aureus, and even um, fungi. So this would be useful for cleaning and disinfecting a lot of different um, clinical surfaces. Keep in mind you have to leave it on for two minutes. Notice it doesn't say it can kill endospores. So if you're trying to clean up um, after a person who has diarrhea um, and they have uh, Clostridioides difficile infection or anything else where you expect endospores, this will not kill the endospores. Um, they have this interesting gray um, this interesting gray product, which is meant for um, use in rooms where there are patients with respiratory problems. So it doesn't have any alcohol. And so basically it has those same two quaternary ammonias, three minute contact time. And again, it doesn't kill endospores. What kills endospores is bleach. And so the orange is bleach. And its active ingredient, 0.6% sodium hypochlorite, that's 10% bleach. And so even then, four minute contact time, but it can kill um, 
endospores, and norovirus virions, and then all the other microorganisms mentioned for red and purple. Um, and so this is what you would ideally use um, to clean up after patients who have norovirus or C. diff. I don't know what to call this color, so I call it plum. Um, and it brags 50 microorganisms in one minute. So it kills the same organisms as purple. Not orange, not bleach, but purple. And it has high concentration of a quaternary ammonia and a mix of ethyl and isopropyl alcohols. And that allows it to kill 50 different microorganisms in one minute. So think of this as the purple, but a shorter contact time. Isn't that cool? Um, and then the last one is green. It's 4% hydrogen peroxide. So it's useful against live cells and it can kill C. diff if you leave it on for five minutes. So hydrogen peroxide is very reactive. I don't know if any of you would have ever seen this one. So those are the chemical methods that Santa Claus, um, I think it's fascinating and I wish I had the complete set on display where I live because I think they're so cool. But again, they're not magic. They don't instantly inactivate endospores. And that's the main thing to take home about that. So I'll see you at the next video.